People and welcome to the diaries. Well, it's November something rather. I don't know. I guess what is it? Sixteenth. And um, boy, howdy! This has been a strange couple of weeks. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on, and I haven't gotten anything. And in this episode, I'm not holding my breath because the weather's gotten weird. And uh, so I haven't been able to work on the porch, which I want to do, um, just uh, with the uh, music stuff, the uh, Kiss Up Film stuff that I can't get back to either. It's just been a whole heck of a lot of stuff. So I don't know exactly what's going to happen in this episode. I'm ho thinking there's probably not going to be a whole heck of a lot, because uh, November, I'm supposed to do a... Uh, little holiday Thanksgiving thing for a cast or whatever, or, or friends or whatever. And I don't think I'm going to get to be able to do that this year because I just can't afford it. But I am doing Thanksgiving with my daughter. Odds are I'm not going to film that because it's none of your business. No, because I just uh, think this year we're going to just have a nice little quiet thing. And um, so there hasn't been a whole schmalecklin of things going on. Now, in December, we've got quite a number of schmalacklin of things going on, but we're not in December yet. We're still in the November area. So we have to kind of just kind of like trudge through this month and get to the end of it. Now, don't make, don't, don't think that I'm making that sound like I don't like November. I love November. I love October, November, December. I'm even a fan of January because it's, it's, a, it's a good time of year, especially in Arizona where, um, you know, we consider a cold snap when it gets below 70 degrees for more than, you know, 20 minutes in a row. So, uh, I love this time of year. And I like the, the sensations and the feels and the smells and the, everything that goes on with it. I love it. I like December a little more than November. I like October a little less than November. So there you go. Going right up the ladder there. So, as we get into December... Um, there should be some things that we're going to be doing. Now, either... Hmm, not going to hold my breath that happens in this episode, but quite likely in the next one. Uh, we are planning... My daughter and I are planning to go out to McCormick Stillman Railroad for the Christmas train and theoretically out to Zoo Lights, which I've done every year since the first year that I did it right here on Dark Slate Diaries, which I think was the first year of Dark Slate Diaries. So, we're going to go out... And do that most likely in the next episode. This episode, who knows? We'll see what happens. I know that I've got uh, a meeting coming up with uh, the band uh, waiting for Waffles and their parents. So um, there might be a little bit of that on here. Um, I don't know. It might be a short episode. So since it's going to be that way anyway, without any further ado... Let's get going! Roll. Action. I can't believe you can go so long for... I, no. Restart. I can't believe you can go so long for... We all have our lofty missions in life, Jordan. Mine is to be a courier. Hopefully. Holy crap. I brought a pillow. When we get to town, I can take a nap because I got a pillow. You know, the zipper don't close. Let's try again. At the risk of getting yelled at, how much longer do we have to go? So that motorcycle is out of uh, earshot. Okay. That's a beautiful map. Thank you. At the risk of getting yelled at, how much longer do we have to go? About 19 miles, and I forgot the next line. We should get in there tomorrow, sometime in the evening. Okay, seems over. 
Get in there by tomorrow night, barring any trouble. Barring any trouble along the way. 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 You know, some people request very strange things from this show. Well, just the fact that some people watch the show is kind of strange, but I got, uh, I got a request, I got a couple of them actually, from people, local people who who watch the diaries that said, you know, you ought to do a whole section on your junk mail. Just do a section every week of a different piece of junk mail. Because, you know, I'm thinking that's not such a great idea. But I want to do it anyway. You know, a lot of people don't look at the junk mail. They just toss it right in the pooper. And a lot of the time it never goes in the junk mail sometimes. Sometimes no effort goes in at all. But, with that in mind, here's our new section on junk mail. Eddie, junk mail. <laughs> And I have something here today, which may be junk mail, or may not. I don't know. It says on it, let's see. It says, uh, it's a post office box from San Diego. It says, keep for your records. So, yeah. It says right there. Keep for your records. I don't know what records. Let's see what it is. This has nothing on it. Doesn't say personal and confidential. Doesn't feel like it has a fake card in it. So we'll uh, have a look. Of course, I won't tell you who it's from because we don't want that kind of issue. Uh, someone's trying to give me a loan again. I get this a lot. I don't know why people are trying to give me a loan all the time. Have they looked at my credit score? I'm not thinking they have because they wouldn't be offering me loans because they're always in the same zone, about five grand. And so, uh, yeah, it's a congratulations, you are pre-qualified. That means absolutely nothing. I've been pre-qualified for a lot of things that I haven't been able to get. Because pre-qualification basically just means you qualified to get junk mail from us. And that's what they got here. Uh, for X amount of dollars is confirmed. Uh-huh. That means you can request your... I don't have my glasses on. Yeah, it's it's someone trying to give me a loan. And it says, keep for your records. If they want this to go in my garbage records, then I'll keep it for that. I'll throw it in my garbage, and it'll stay with me until I throw out my garbage. Pataga! Ow! I just got hit in the head with a loan request. And I did it to myself. Okay, that's our junk mail for today. Yay! On other things. Okay, I've decided I'm not quite done with this piece of junk mail, and this is why. I have my glasses on so I can read it. It says, um, your pre-qualified status for dollars is confirmed. Okay? This means you can request your money today at the website above from any computer, tablet, or phone. Since you're already pre-qualified, since you're already pre-qualified, all you need to do is provide some basic information before February 15, 2020. All you need to do is supply basic information. If I am pre-qualified, then why do I have to give them basic information? Apparently, they already have all that basic information, right? Now, check this out in the back. I love this. Listen carefully. Okay. Uh, okay. This pre-screened offer of credit is based on information on your credit report indicating that you meet certain criteria. Here, here, here it comes. Here it comes. Hang on. This offer is not guaranteed if you do not meet our criteria. Didn't they just say on the front of this bad boy, just like two seconds ago when I was reading it, didn't it say that your pre-qualified status is confirmed? Okay? Since you're already pre-qualified. It I uh, just said on the front, right here, that I'm pre-qualified. That that's that. I just give them basic information like blood type, next to kin, uh, where I keep my, you know, stash of gold handy. And then uh, right on the back it says, this is not a guarantee. We have an expression for that. It's called hypocrisy. That is ridiculous. This is a lie. <laughs> One side of this piece of paper is lying to you. Is it the side that says you're pre-qualified? Or is it the side that says you're probably not pre-qualified? It's a lie. 
Pazanga! I can't throw these things away without getting hit in the face with Away with you! Stupid papaya paper. Okay, now we're done with the uh, thing. Yeah. It's does it so does not sound like waiting for waffles. <laughs> it sounds like something you else. Do a lot of those. Yeah, it's it it, it was a lot of um, experimentation, and I don't want to bury your guys' talent in the technical end of it. Okay. So like, for instance, with your keyboard, now all that keyboard, even the weird stuff in the middle you probably don't recognize, is totally you. All I did is I took the two, remember you did two takes, I took the two takes and I overlapped them by half a measure. So that's why it starts to go bling, 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 and get all funky. So that's a, that is covering your skill with the technical end of it, which I don't want to do too much of. Um, and of course with yours, your fills and everything like that, you do the fills outside of the song and then put them in. And then I put them in. Okay. Okay. Um, again, that's covering your skill with technology. Because I'm basically making you more of a complex player than you are. Really? And that's not the idea behind this. The idea behind this is for you guys to improve and develop your skills and so forth. <coughs> Um, and I realized on the last song that I got so involved in making the song sound good that I forgot the simple aspect that you guys are the musicians. I mean, I play the bass, granted, but you guys are the musicians, and that's got to come, that's got to be more up front in the song, which is why I'm asking you about this uh, music type thing. So I don't want people to think that you know, you have 15 arms and can play a billion notes at one time. Not even. We were it getting some man. strange email requests too. What's that? We were getting some strange email requests to do things like that. Um, eventually, <coughs> everyone will have the skills to do these things. Uh, but I don't want to. I don't want to overstate your abilities. It's November 29th, the day after Thanksgiving, commonly known as Black, 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 Black Friday. Friday. Friday, 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 Friday. And this Black Friday, I have plans to not go anywhere. I have to work tonight, but that's not till you know, later in the night. And then I have the weekend off again. Thanksgiving was pretty cool. I spent it with my daughter and some friends and... I did all the cooking because that's what I do, as many of you know. The last couple of days have been very convoluted. Actually, almost the last week or so has been very convoluted. And I haven't got a heck of a lot uh, done, and I certainly haven't filmed anything. So uh, let's try to see some stuff. We'll do some stuff, hopefully, over the course of the next couple of days. So this video will come out in the beginning of December. Because we have zoo lights in December, and we also have the Christmas train in December. The other day I was coming home from work, uh, the other night actually, I was coming home from work, and I had uh, the radio station on 99.9, I've told you about it before, they play Christmas music, uh, just Christmas music from beginning of November until uh, Christmas Day. They play it on Christmas Day. And um, this thing is, is this one. There's a lot of performers out there that like to take classic Christmas tunes and put their own spin on it. And for the most part, that's okay. But there's a couple of performers. And these are like, you know, the Sinatra styles, which I guess would be called club or, you know, at one time it would be swing, so forth and so forth. But this one guy, he did the song... Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas. Now, Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas is a little song. Okay, it's a very short, small song. It's a great song. It's a beautiful song. I love it. But this guy, he's playing the piano, and he's singing. He's taking one-syllable words and turning them into, you know, like ten-syllable words. And he sang it so slow. He sang it so slow that he took the shortest Christmas song in the world and made it about as long as the Nagata Davida. 
And it was just have yourself a merry little Christmas, but he took forever to sing it. Have yourself. Oh, Mary. It went on forever. It is a short song. It should be sung as a short song. My gosh, it was crazy. Anyway, a lot of, you know, uh, a lot of uh, modern artists, and even, you know, some over the past 20, 30 years, have made their own versions of certain songs, and some have made their own Christmas songs. And whenever I turn on the radio, I think, there's, there's two songs I don't want to hear. Okay? And, and you'll probably disagree with me on this, and that, that's fine. This is my personal taste. But that song, So This Is Christmas, that John Lennon one. I'm sorry, I hate that song. He took... A song about Christmas and turned it into, into an anti-war song. That's fine. But, man, I hate that song. I hate that song. And hearing Yoko Ono, who cannot, never could sing, trying to sing, is... Man, I hate that song. Anyway, that one and... Last Christmas, I gave you my heart. I swear to God, every performer in the United States and in Europe has covered that tune. There's got to be more versions of that song than there is of Jingle Bells. It's crazy. It's, and it's, it's one of those songs that it's cringeworthy to me. The original version was not bad because it was original. But it's not original anymore. Everybody and their brothers. There's probably a metal version of it. I'm willing to. I'm going to look. I think there's a metal version of that song. Last Christmas, I gave you my heart. But the very next day, you gave it away. This year, to save me from tears, I give it to someone special. Anyway, my gripe was not about that. My gripe was about... How you take a short little Christmas tune and turn it into an opus is, uh, it's just, it, it was just a bit much. That's my grape today, okay? At least it was not, a, you know, political. Well, I, I don't think I do political or anything, anyway. Okay, so the thing is this one. Okay! I have been waiting to release this particular oh, video, God. this uh, episode, until I got the opportunity to go out and work on putting up the Christmas decorations, right? Okay, well, this year, the weather in Phoenix has got a personality disorder. It doesn't know what it wants to do. It doesn't know where we are. It doesn't know if we're in the Himalayas or in the desert. It just cannot make up its mind. So I've had to put it off and put it off and put it off. So what I was going to do, I was going to do it tomorrow, okay? Today is the 3rd of December. I was going to do it today is, yes, I was going to do it tomorrow. And the reason I was going to do it tomorrow is because today I had to work. And I got home at 4, which was too late to really start anything except get stuff out of the uh, storage unit. So I was going to do it tomorrow. I have tomorrow from 2 o'clock until the end of the day to be able to wrap it up. And if I couldn't wrap it up, I could do it on Friday. Okay. The weather has improved exponentially because I wanted to use a word with lots of syllables in it there it has improved greatly so I figured this is it this is gonna be it so it started raining I figured oh it's a little sprinkle not a big deal I'll go check the weather thing it's supposed to rain right through Thursday so bam, I have waited to release this after doing that, so he'd have something to see, and it'd get, you know, to be in the spirit. But it ain't gonna happen for at least another, maybe next weekend. And I don't want to wait any longer on this. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna end this episode. I know there's not a heck of a lot on here, but it, it just Mother Nature is being a not nice, and uh, she's uh, not allowing me to to. Get out there to do this stuff. Now, there is a very slim possibility that it may only rain in the evening through the weekend or through the through Thursday, or it may start in the morning. I don't know. But I'm not going to wait any longer. So this is what I'm going to do. We're going to end this episode. Um, I'm going to start filming the next episode tomorrow for sure, but I'm going to do the uh, tree and the indoor decorating stuff then. 
Now, as you know, normally, I do the Christmas tree and the decorating after my little Thanksgiving special thing for cast or what have you. Well, this year I couldn't do that because I just <laughs> wasn't in my personal budget to be able to do that. So we couldn't, I couldn't afford to do it. So we didn't do that this year. So I'm going to set the thing up. And I can't, actually, you know what, I can't set the tree up until after the weekend. Because I have a film shoot in here on Saturday and Sunday. So I have to do it on Monday. Hopefully it'll stop raining by Monday. So, yeah, that's what's going on. Now, in the next, theoretically the next episode, which will probably come a couple of weeks, before Christmas, but um, we're going to go ride the, uh, the Christmas train at McCormick Stillman Railroad. That's the plan. And hopefully we'll get out to Zoo Lights. That's also the plan. Um, we will see which of those actually takes place. Or both of them do. Wouldn't that be cool? We'll figure that out. But I'm just going to end this one and say sorry ahead of time. Uh, probably because I don't have enough subscribers. That's it. You need to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell button. Because if you don't do that, you're going to get lousy episodes like this one. <laughs> anyway. Okay. Whew. I'm just kind of bummed on this episode. And in any case, the next one will be better. And in the meantime, you guys have yourselves a great week. Yeah, end of line. Once feeling, twice shy. I keep my distance, but you still catch my